about geometric series, correct? That it can be convergent, correct? Or it can be divergent, and it's dependent on that common ratio, correct? We know something uh, about this kind of series, a harmonic series. We know it's always divergent, right? Guaranteed. Uh, we know something about um, this kind of series. What's the other one? Oh, one over n to the seven. Okay, if I had a series like that. Right, that falls into the P series, correct? And so, or if I had something that went like this. One of those diverges and one of them converges, correct? Okay, and we look at this number. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have series that we're going to compare to these, okay? And we're gonna say, hey, that looks a lot like this series, let's compare it. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? All right, so here's my notes. And what these are for, are for complicated for complicated series. And what you're gonna do is compare already know. And already know the theory. Already know. Okay? All right. So we have this relationship. If we have a series that is between zero and another series, if B sub n converges, then A sub N converges also. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little picture. Here's B sub N. And I know that it converges. Well, since a sub n is underneath that, b sub n forces it to converge. Okay. Now, here, a sub n, we know something about a sub n. We know it diverges. So since b sub n is bigger than a sub n, that means sub n diverges. And so here we have this. We have a sub n is diverging. And then here's b sub n. Well, it's going to be forced up also because it's always got to be bigger than a sub n. Okay? So sometimes if I draw those pictures, you can see, okay? So I have this situation right here, okay? And I'm gonna focus on this right here. And I wanna know, is there anything I know about this? Anybody have a guess? Geometric. Okay, very good. How do you know that's geometric? Because one of the n things is going to be one, so that can also be one of the n matrices of things. Like that? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, all right, so we know it's geometric. We know whether it converges or diverges.
Convergence, why? Convergence is one half, one half is less than one, right? All right, so now I'm going to compare this to this. So I want this to converge. That means this has to be less than this. So I'm going to list uh, and I'm just going to list it. So here is a sub n and I'm going to list the values. So when I put in one here I have a half and then I have a fourth and then I have an eighth and then I have a sixteenth, correct? Those are my terms. And this is a sub n equals 1 over 2n. Now I'm going to compare it to this one, which is the first term is compared to a sub n equals 1 over 2n plus 2n. And when I put 1 in here, I get 1 fifth. If I put two in there, I get one seventh. If I put three in there, I get one eleventh, correct? So let's look at these terms. Is one fifth smaller than a half? Is one seventh, I probably should have a fourth one. I think it's one nineteenth. And so one half less than one fifth? Is one fourth less than Excuse me, is one fifth less than one half? Is one seventh less than one fourth? They all are, correct? Therefore, this converges. If I compared it to that one. Okay. So notice that zero is less than, I'm just going to notate this. Now, what geometric series, Matthew, are you pulled towards? Yeah, okay, would everybody agree? That which geometric are you looking at? One over, or one fourth to the n. One fourth to the n, right? Right? Geometric. Okay? So let's list some. So I have one fourth. Then my next one would be what, Matthew? One sixteenth. And let's go one more. What would be the next one? What is four to the third power? One sixteenth. Right. Okay? So now let's put one in here. What do you get when you put it in this one? Uh, one. One. What do you get when you put two into here? Uh, one. One thirteenth. One thirteenth. And what do you put a three in there? One sixteen third. Yeah. What's the problem with that? It's bigger. It's bigger. And since this converges, it's got to be smaller, okay? It's got to be smaller, so I can't use this. Can't use, and the reason why is zero is less than uh, one over four to the n, which is less than one over four to the n minus three, right? So I got to compare it to something else. Now, if I was adding, that wouldn't be the problem, would it? Okay, but I'm subtracting. So do I know another geometric series that I know converges that's going to be bigger than this one?
something that I know can produce that's going to be bigger than that. If I do well, I don't know anything about one over four and EM minus four. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I don't know if necessarily it converged. I want to make sure I know for sure that one converges. How about this one? Is that geometric? Could I could I have chosen one half? One over I could have, right? But I know this one converges, right? The <coughs> common ratio is one third. And if I list these, I have one third, one ninth, one twenty seventh, one eighty one, comma dot dot dot. And I'll list these. So I have one here, correct? That's a little problem. The next one I have is 1 13th. Next one I have is 1 over 61. Uh, right, and I have one in here. I have two in here. Oh, I have two in here, 1 15th. Where did we get one? You probably said 1 15th, am I right? I heard 1 13th. Oh, no, it is 1 13th. Subtracting two. So then it's 161 for the third one. And for the fourth one, I think four, is that 256? 256 minus three is 252. So you can see at first it's bigger, correct? But then every single one it's getting a lot, lot less, correct? So since this I know converges, this converges. So it looks geometric. So what I do is I use a base that's one less. Could I have used one half? Yeah. Lucy. So when I read like that first one doesn't work, you just do like the same thing, but with minus one. Right, right, one. right. Because this right here, you're adding all these, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is getting a lot smaller quicker than this one is. And I know this converges, so this one's gonna converge too. You just got this little hiccup at the very beginning, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at this. What do you think we should compare to this? And you want it to be as simple as possible. Want to, want to compare to what? Series would that be then, Lucy? Oops, I'm telling you. The P series. Yeah, the P series. And P would be what here? Two. And two is greater than one, correct? So what do I know about this series? One converges. You're right, this one converges. So I'm going to look at them and I'm going to say, all right, the first one's going to be. 1 over n squared. The first one's going to be 1, then it's going to be 1 fourth, then it's going to be 1 ninth, then it's going to be 1 sixteenth, that's far enough. So now when I put a 1 into here, I get 1 over 11. I get 1 over, oh my gosh, 4, 28, 32. Does that look correct? 3 squared is 9. 9 times 7 is 63, 1 over 67. If I put a 4 at 16, oh my gosh, what's 16 times 7? 112? 116? So what does that mean about this? Convergence, correct? So what you do is you take a look and say, all right, let me start here and see if that works. Right? Are we okay with that? 
All right, we're going to talk about the limit comparison test. That's another. And this one says uh, you're going to take, you're going to create a ratio where A sub n is over B sub n, and L n is, and you're going to see if they have a limit. And if they have a limit, either both converge or both diverge. So again, I'm going to pick one that I know. I'm going to pick one that I know and I'm going to create this ratio and take the limit of it. If it has a limit, then the one that you didn't pick will be either converging dependent on the one you did pick or dot divergence. So let's flip it over and look at this and show you what I mean. All right, so I wrote some hints here. Look at the degree. of each polynomial. And so in this case, it's n squared on top, and it's n to the fifth on the bottom. And when I simplify that, I get one over n cubed, okay? So I just looked at this first term, I looked at this first term, and I want something simple. Okay, what do I know about this? Period series. Okay, so P series either converges or doesn't converge, correct? What does it do here? Okay, what? Converges. Converges. Why? Yeah, three is greater than one. So, now I'm going to take, this is going to be, so one, so this, B sub n, is going to be one over n cubed. So if you take a look on the other side, I'm making a ratio of A sub n over B sub n, and I'm going to take the limit of this. And so B sub n is chosen, um, chosen um, series. So I got the limit as n goes to infinity. Here's A sub n. n, 2n squared minus two over five n to the fifth plus three n plus one. Now, I never divide, I always multiply by the reciprocal. Are you guys okay with that? And you'll see me do that all the time. So now this is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n to the fifth minus 2n cubed over 5n to the fifth plus 3n plus 1. Do I know that limit? Yeah, what is that limit? Two fifths. So it's two fifths. So that's L, correct? So since this converge, this has to converge, simply because this had a limit. Ethan, can I move on? Yeah. Okay. Ethan, what do you think B sub n should be? One over n squared. Yeah. What is it? Why? You're right, B series. Two is greater than one, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take the limit, which again goes to infinity. So you see where I get n squared over 5n squared plus 5n plus 5. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that, where I just multiply by n squared over 1, right? Yeah. Does that have a limit? Yeah. What is it? So what can you tell me about this? It converges. Converges. What do you think you want? square root of n. Okay? So I'll get rid of all this multiplying by that square root is what dominates. Okay? What do I know? What is this? P series. P -series. Divergence or converging? Diverge. Diverge. And if they ask you why, you would tell me what? P is less than one. One half is less than one. Right? So now, I'm going to take the limit. Because n goes to infinity. Are you okay where I get this? Everybody okay with that? And I can rewrite it like this. Just do a little bit of algebra. Everybody okay with that? So does that have a limit? I said affirmative not, which is correct. You know what it is. Right? The degrees here are the same. You just, you don't have to simplify it, you don't you just say, boom, it's there. So, what does it mean about this? It's going to match up with what you, here, so it's going to do what here? Diverge. Diverge. Okay, because it follows what, it follows the diverging or converging of the series you Because it could have been possible that there was no limit. And if there's no limit, then we don't know. The limit simply says it's going to follow what this is doing. So, which you, so if the second part has a limit, it just means it doesn't follow what you did in the first part. Since it has no limit, it's unknown. Correct. Yeah? Like, does infinity count as having a limit? No. Mm -hmm. it, and if we would go to infinity, it would simply mean we don't know whether it converges. So we pick a series, we determine whether it's converging or diverging, we take a limit, and that limit simply says it follows whatever this one we pick does. Okay, that's all it tells you. We're playing all the leader. Is that even a leader? Anyway? Okay, let's see. All right. So, Lucy, what should we choose for B? It's kind of like the number four. One over x squared. Perfect. What do you know about it? It's a p series. Yeah. That converges. Converges, right? Mm -hmm. So if if this ratio has a limit, this has to converge. Okay. And so 
you, I'm hoping you see, I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple of steps here. I'm hoping you see where I get n to the fifth minus seven n squared over two n to the fifth plus n squared plus n plus one. All I did was multiply by one of n squared over one. And so that has a limit, correct? I think it's one half, am I right? Mm -hmm. And so this thing, this converges, it's got a little screwed up. It doesn't converge to this thing because it's a ratio. It's just saying, hey, it's following the same pattern that this one we know. And we picked something really, really simple. All right. So I'm going to look at this right here. And I'm going to look at, I can rewrite this as n over 4n cubed plus 2 times 3 of the n over 1. Would you agree? You're okay with that. So here I am going to choose my series. What series am I going to use? Let's focus on this a degree up here of 1. Ignore this for a second. 1 over n squared. Times 3 to the n. 3 to the n, not 3 to the n. 3 to the n. So on comparing it, I'm going to pair this to that term. Now, what do I know about that term as n gets bigger? So my first would be 3 over 1. Would you agree? My next one would be 9 over 4. Would you agree? My next one would be 27 over 9. Correct? My next one would be 81 over 16. So what can you tell me about the top compared to the bottom? Faster, yeah. correct? Because it's exponential and this is polynomial, right? The other thing is I could take, use L'Hopital's rule a couple of times and I'd end up getting a constant on the bottom, correct? And I would keep that exponential on top, correct? So using what we call the nth Term test for divergence. This divergence. So now I'm going to write my limit. Okay, Lucy? Well, I just have a question on yep. that and term test again. Can you just remind me again why okay. we don't say it here too? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to write it over here because I'm losing room. That's a good question. Thank you. So you have this. And there's a couple of ways to look at it. I could actually list them and see that I have three plus nine over four, so drop down here, correct? And then I'll have 27 over nine, so it's back to three, and that's 81 over 16, correct? And three times, I mean, this is bigger than four, 
bigger than five, correct? And now I have 243 over 32. So this top is getting big fast, correct? And so I'm adding, adding these numbers up, I'm adding bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. Keeps going. So this is headed towards infinity. It diverges. Because my numbers that because I'm gonna be adding these too, correct? And those numbers keep getting bigger. Because the limit of this goes to infinity. Okay, and if you don't see it, you say, hey, we also have L'Hopital's rule that says I'm gonna have the L with three times three in the N. Here I'll have two N. And then I can take the derivative again, I'll have the LN of three times the LN of three times three of the N, and down here I have two. Okay, so it's just gonna keep big, get bigger. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Thank you, okay. And so now I'm back to here, right? So I gotta have a limit to say this diverges. I have to have a limit. So I notice that I can rewrite it like this. Here I have n cubed times three of the n. And down here I have four n cubed uh, plus two times three of the n, correct? And the three of the n simplify, correct? And so does this have a limit? That limit is one fourth, so this diverges. Again, if we would have no limit, we would say we don't know. All right. This is the hardest part. What do you think this is? And what I do is, I say, hey, this has a degree of one, right? The n cubed carries the most power. So what would be the degree at the bottom? n to the what? Three over two. Three over two. So I have n over one over n to the three halves, which is the same as one over n to the half, correct? okay there and so that's the same and we know we already know from previous that this diverges correct so now I have the limit as n goes to infinity of n over the cube root of n plus Okay, so this is the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the three halves over the square root of n cubed plus n. We still doing okay? And this is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity. Now I do not know if I dare do this, but this right here is the square root of n cubed, correct? So I can write n cubed over n cubed plus n, n on the bottom, inside that radical. Okay. And does that have a limit? I think it's one, isn't it? Since those are divergent. 